In this lesson, we're going to talk about the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. This is the way that the kidneys help to regulate and control blood pressure. So inside the kidneys, there is a structure called the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Now, juxta, that prefix juxta, just means uh, near or next to, and then of course, the glomerulus. So the juxtaglomerular apparatus is near the glomerulus. So what it is, is it's juxtaglomerular cells at the afferent arterial and macula densa cells at the distal convoluted tubule that come together to create this apparatus. Now, these cells are gonna detect certain conditions within the bloodstream in order to start this whole process. There's three main stimuli that starts it. One is hyponatremia or low sodium in the blood. Another is low blood pressure in the afferent arterial and the other is decreased perfusion to the kidneys. So essentially if the kidneys aren't getting enough blood flow or if sodium levels are low, it's gonna start this process. So when the juxtaglomerular apparatus is stimulated, it causes the release of the enzyme renin. The release of renin is what then starts this cascade known as the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. So let's look at that system or the RAAS in more detail and we'll look one step at a time. First, we get a stimulus. Again, this could be uh, hyponatremia, it could be low blood pressure, or it could be poor perfusion to the kidneys. That is gonna stimulate the release of the enzyme renin. Now, in our blood already circulating, there's a protein called angiotensinogen. When that comes into contact with the renin, it converts that to angiotensin 1. Now, angiotensin 1 is going to circulate in the bloodstream until it gets to the lungs. And in the lungs, it comes into contact with an enzyme called ACE, or angiotensin converting enzyme. And just like the name says, that enzyme is going to convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is what does all of the work here. It is our powerhouse. So let's look at the four main things that angiotensin 2 does in our body. First is that it causes a release of aldosterone. Aldosterone goes to the kidneys and it causes increased absorption or reabsorption of sodium back into the blood. So it's retention, it's retaining sodium. Anytime sodium gets reabsorbed or retained, chloride and water are going to follow. So we're also going to see water retention here. When we retain more water, our blood volume increases, which can increase our blood pressure. The second thing that angiotensin II does is it causes the release of ADH from the pituitary gland. ADH stands for antidiuretic hormone. So diuresis or diuretic means to get rid of water or to urinate. So if antidiuretic, then it means we're not getting rid of water. So we're going to retain it. So again, we see more retention of water. If we retain water, blood volume goes up and that increases our blood pressure. Third, we're gonna see peripheral vasoconstriction. So that means that uh, the blood vessels out in our body, like in the extremities, are gonna constrict. That's gonna increase the pressure and bring more blood back to the kidneys and back to the heart. Last thing we're gonna see is increased sympathetic nervous system activity. That's gonna increase our heart rate, it's gonna increase our blood pressure, and many, many other things. Make sure that you review the autonomic nervous system lesson for more about that. So ultimately, all of these things are gonna work together to help increase our blood volume, which increases our blood pressure and helps improve flow to the kidneys. Now, let's remember, what were our initial stimuli? Well, right here, that's where we see the improvement of the sodium levels. And then everything else with all of the water retention, the vasoconstriction, the sympathetic nervous system activity, that's all gonna work together to increase our blood pressure, which is gonna improve our flow to the kidneys. So when these things happen, it actually reverses these initial stimuli, which can actually stop this process so that everything can just level off. So this cycle is happening repeatedly in the body so that we can kind of maintain this normal blood pressure and maintain our normal homeostasis. Okay, let's recap. The stimuli for the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system 
are low blood pressure in the afferent arterial, low perfusion to the kidneys, or hyponatremia. Those things are sensed by the juxtaglomerular apparatus, which stimulates the release of renin. Renin converts angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1, which is converted to angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE, which is in the lungs. Now, angiotensin 2, that's our powerhouse. That's our workhorse. That's what does everything we need it to do. It causes the release of aldosterone and ADH, vasoconstriction, and increased sympathetic nervous system activity. Aldosterone and ADH is going to help with sodium and water retention, and that's going to help increase our blood volume. And then all of these other things together are going to work to increase our blood pressure, improve the flow to the kidneys so that these stimuli can stop and everything can level off. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.